2010 was a memorable year. The first Avatar movie smashed box office records, Apple released the first iPad, One Direction had just gotten its start in the music industry, and perhaps most memorable of all, the Missouri Tigers won a game in the NCAA tournament. And since then, well, they just released an Avatar sequel, Apple has come out with a bunch of new iPads, and One Direction has had plenty of hit songs. But Missouri has seemed to stagnate a little bit. Because since that 2010 win over Clemson, Missouri has failed to win a game in the NCAA tournament. Not even when they were a two seed in 2012 and faced Norfolk State in the first round. It's been a disappointing drought for the Tigers, as in that same time frame, they have only been to five NCAA tournaments while employing five different head coaches. But luckily, I think the fifth time may just be the charm. Because Dennis Gates has arrived, and he's ready to save Missouri basketball. Now let me introduce you to the new Mizzou. Despite not having incredibly high expectations heading into the year, Missouri has quickly become one of the most intriguing teams in college basketball. The Tigers are 13-2 with wins over Illinois and Kentucky, and they have the look of an NCAA tournament team. But in order to understand Missouri's total turnaround into a fun and capable team, we gotta look at the issues that plagued the program last year, and I'll be honest, the before picture isn't that pretty. In the 2021-22 season, Missouri went 12-21 with an SEC record of 5-13. They were undisciplined on offense and anemic on defense, and nobody on the team really showed many signs of promise. Mizzou finished last year shooting 28% from three as a team, turning the ball over on 21% of their possessions, and giving up a ton of easy baskets. Things definitely could have been better. But now, let's look at the after picture. In its first 15 games under Gates, the Tigers had the nation's best offense per Bartorvik, they forced a ton of turnovers, and their three-point shooting has improved by nearly 10 percentage points from a year ago. This turnaround has been sparked by improvements to two key components of any college basketball program, the roster and the playstyle. Missouri's roster is, in one word, old. Out of Mizzou's 10 significant rotation players, 9 of them are juniors or older, with the only underclassmen getting significant minutes being freshman forward Aiden Shaw. Naturally, this also means that Mizzou is one of the country's most experienced teams, as they boast an average playing career length of 2.6 years, which is a top 25 mark in the country. Despite Missouri's experience, they actually lack continuity. Dennis Gates built this roster on transfers as he brought in 9 of them in his first year as head coach, but make no mistake, these players are talented and leading them is Demoy Hodge. Hodge was one of four players Gates brought with him from Cleveland State, and he's been one of Missouri's top players so far. At 6'4", Hodge is averaging a team leading 15.9 points a game while shooting 52% from the floor and 42% from three. His maneuverability with the ball allows him to get to his spots extremely well, and he's proven himself to be a terrific finisher at the rim this year too, as he's hitting an absurd 84.8% of his shots around the basket. This number puts him in the top 10 nationally, where he's also the only player under 6'8 on the list. And his scoring prowess is only accentuated by his versatile and efficient three-point shooting, where he's become a lethal catch-and-shoot weapon for Missouri. In a lot of ways, Hodge is the perfect modern college basketball guard. He's efficient at the rim and from three, and he's also a disruptive defender who makes a consistent impact as well. Hodge snatches an absurd 2.8 steals per game, which is top five in the country, and his steal rate of 5.6% also ranks in the top 10. While he isn't a phenomenal lateral athlete, Hodge is incredibly smart as a defender, and he's really aggressive in help situations which leads to forced turnovers and fast break opportunities for Missouri. In addition to Hodge, Dennis Gates also did a really good job at finding players in the transfer portal that filled key roles for this current Missouri roster. Clemson transfer Nick Honor is the team's starting point guard, and he's been great for the Tigers as he's averaging close to 10 points a game and shooting 44% from three, while also leading the team in assists at a little over three and a half per game. That experience also shines in how well he takes care of the ball, as the fifth-year senior boasts an impressive 55-15 to 15 total assist-to-turnover ratio on the season. When Honor is on the bench, reigning National Junior College Player of the Year Sean East comes in and runs the show, as he's another composed and experienced point guard who averages a little over three assists per game as well. Cleveland State transfer guard Trey Gamillion is another player Gates brought with him to Columbia, and he's just another solid and reliable player who's a great cutter and hard worker while typically coming off the bench. Northern Iowa transfer Noah Carter is a 6'6 forward who plays extremely physical and averages around 11 points and 5 rebounds a game. And there's also Milwaukee transfer DeAndre Golston who is averaging 10.8 points a game and has a penchant for hitting big shots. Final seconds! Hodge moving down, fell, throws it over! If Isaiah Mosley can come back healthy after averaging 20 points a game last season for Missouri State, that gives the Tigers yet another experienced scoring guard with high collegiate upside. All these transfers are great, but Missouri's most impressive player might actually be someone who started his career in Columbia. 
and of course, that player is Kobe Brown. The 6'7 senior has undergone a breakout season through the team's first 15 games. He's averaging around 15.5 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists per game on ridiculous 57-44-83 shooting splits. As perhaps Missouri's best NBA prospect and longest tenured player in the program, Brown has done an awesome job at showing up against some of the Tigers' best opponents. He's dropped 31-30 and 30 in consecutive games against Illinois and Kentucky respectively, and he just seems to do everything at a high level. He's an efficient scorer, energetic defender, and intuitive passer, and he's also shown some real ball handling skills that will intrigue decision makers at the next level, while also giving Missouri yet another quality self-creator as the season progresses. The other half of Mizzou's turnaround has to do with its style of play. Dennis Gates has implemented a unique philosophy on both ends of the ball, and teams have had a difficult time stopping it. Basically, Missouri likes playing fast. I want to go fast! On offense, the Tigers are one of the top 25 fastest playing teams in America, and they love getting out on the fast break and converting on easy opportunities. In fact, Missouri's 19 fast break points per game is third in the entire country, only behind TCU and High Point, and Des Moy Hodges' 6.1 fast break points per game ranks second in the country. But their pace on offense only tells one half of the story, because Missouri's defense is also predicated on speeding teams up and turning them over. Mizzou forces turnovers on approximately 26% of its possessions, which is good for fifth in the nation. They love pressing in the backcourt, and they do this for two main reasons. Number one, it could produce a turnover quickly and put Missouri in an easy position to score, like here, where Des Moy Hodge taps the ball away from Coleman Hawkins and then gets the ball back for an open three. Number two is to slow the opponent down in the backcourt, which gives them less time to run their offense and leads to rush shots. Like here, where Kentucky's Jacob Toppin beats Missouri's press, but settles for a contested mid-range shot. This is also helped by the fact that Missouri loves to switch defenses to throw opponents off their game. In any given game, you can see the Tigers playing man, 1-3-1, or a 2-3, and this usually comes down to what works best against the other team. For example, against Arkansas, a team with plenty of questionable shooters, Missouri primarily relied on a 2-3 zone, daring Arkansas to beat them from the three-point line. And while Missouri lost the game, their strategy did kind of work, as Arkansas attempted 21 threes, which was the fourth most they've attempted in a game all season. Against Illinois, though, Missouri employed a 1-3-1, forcing the Illini away from the middle of the floor where they like to operate through Coleman Hawkins, who is a tremendous passer as a big man. What makes this style unique is that it's significantly different than anything Gates has run in his years at Cleveland State. While all of his teams were pretty good at forcing turnovers, none of his three teams were even in the top half of Division I when it came to pace of play. So for Gates to totally reinvent his offensive style in year one at Missouri says a lot about him as a coach, and I think that bodes extremely well for Missouri's future. Now, Missouri's start to the season has been super encouraging, but with the SEC ramping up, I wouldn't be surprised to see this team drop a few games, as the conference is absolutely loaded this year and Missouri has a pretty tough schedule ahead of them. It's also important to note that while they do have some quality wins, their resume was relatively weak up until late December, so SEC plays should allow us to get a better read on the Tigers. That being said though, I do think this team makes the NCAA tournament, and it's not out of the question that they win a game or two once they get there. Overall, it's hard not to be excited about what Dennis Gates has built in Columbia in his first few months as head coach. And if we're looking long term, past this year, it seems very likely that the new Mizzou is here to stay. Thanks so much for watching and give me your thoughts below.